to the MMA Fan Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Stu and Blake. Hello and welcome to the MMA Fan Show. I'm Stu Whiffin. Joining me always, Blake Harrison. How are you, mate? Very good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Look, we've got a guest today. And, we do. Uh, and so I don't want to waste any more time, but... Just quickly, before we do, we need to shout out our sponsors, which is Ferocious Fightwear. If uh, if you're watching this, you can see the great big logo up there, so that's what you're looking out for. You can see the Garms on the, uh, the the presenting table in front of you. If you want your rash guards, your shorts, your gum shields, your wraps, check them out. They're a local firm to us as well. They reached out, they said they'd like to support the show, and uh, we're absolutely thrilled to have them on board. So head over to ferociousfightwear.com. Who we got today, mate? Jack the Stone Mason. Here he is. That's not him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack, thanks so much for coming in, mate. Really no appreciate it. Obviously, you were in Vegas less than 48 hours ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. how are you feeling? Are you jet lagged? Are you all right? I'm all, I'm all good. Yeah. You're all good. Yeah. It's all good. Nice and fresh. Um, obviously, you were over there uh, cornering Corey uh, yeah. McKenna. Sadly, uh, the fight didn't go away. No. Nope. Um, but what I wanted to ask you about that that fight in particular yeah. is, as a coach, Corey's come out on on socials. Kind of, it seems like she's sort of kicking herself for a performance. Like maybe she felt like she made a mistake or yeah. something like that. As a coach, in the minutes and the hours when a fighter is feeling like that after the fight. How, what's your job? How how do you go about trying to make things right for the fighter and, and just putting them in a better place? Yeah, so I've been I've been coaching Corey since she was thirteen years old, right? She's twenty four now, so it's, I've known her a long time, and uh, and sort of I know I've seen her go through lots of ups and downs in her life anyway, and and she's just had a really tough year. So she had she had a since her previous fight, which was a great performance against uh, Cheyenne. She she. Um, you know, she had a few injuries after that fight, so she she had to address those. Then she's she got married. She moved. She moved, bought a place. She moved in into that, and she had a lot going on in in her life the last yeah. past year. She hasn't been able to fight because of the injuries. So this was a big one. You know, she you know she did need the money. You know, and uh, getting half a paycheck is, is quite difficult yeah. in terms of the. Um, in terms of her, her her actual life at the moment, so so that that was quite hard to. You know, it's a bit, bit, bit bitter pill to swallow, but she, you know, she did, she did make a mistake, and um, and at this, at that level, she's fighting a um, a girl that's that's won. She's a black, you know, she's a black belt. She's won uh, the world championships at yep. at Nogi and in Gi. So very, very good on the ground. Engaged with her in the grappling, you know, a minute into the fight, and when, when they're both dry, so it was, uh, you know, definitely going off off game plan, and. Um, you know, did she, she really did? Have, she sort of had a mind blip, I think, in the, in that moment. The uh, the her opponent really, you know, set up. Uh, I think I think it was their game plan. You know, throw throw a few sloppy leg kicks so that Corey grabbed it, and then yeah. as soon as she grabbed it, she jumped guard, and um, Corey went to the ground with her um, willingly, which was I think her first mistake. And then there's a few few little errors on the ground as well, and I think it just all happened really quickly. Yes. And um, there was a little bit of confusion with the the arm bar and the, the ref stopped it midway. Yeah. Which I think maybe added to it. She possibly could have got out. She possibly couldn't. And um, yeah, it was a, a really small error in, ju- in judgment and um, it's cost her big. So she's really, really annoyed with herself about that. And um, it's, yeah, it's difficult. I've, I've been there before myself. And um, yeah, really difficult to console her, and yeah. but I know she's really eager to get back in there as soon as possible and uh, right that wrong. Well, that's good, and yeah. hopefully that will. Happen. I mean, we were gutted for Corey. We yeah. had Corey on the show yeah, a, a while said, ago, yeah. and that was around the time that she was having. Um, she just come off the back of like she was having like like headaches and all that yeah. kind of stuff, mm. and she was having problems there that now she's obviously overcome. Yeah. So obviously, it's not been an easy road for her. Yeah, but she's incredibly talented. Also, seems like the loveliest girl. Like yeah, when yeah. we had her on the show, yeah. we just finished. We were like, she was so nice, yeah. so lovely. So fingers crossed that she gets back in there. This soon is it. She's twenty. She's well. twenty four years old, right? Yeah. So yeah. the world's still at her feet. Whatever she decides to do in her life, she's she's super smart as well. Yeah. Uh, lo- like lovely girl and she's a really hard worker. So. I've got no doubt she's going to achieve what she wants to achieve. It's just um, these little blips, they they happen and um, you have to overcome them. Um, yep. So, yeah. 
how does the dynamic work um, and the relationship now from, you, you said obviously you, you worked with Corey from a young age, yeah. and now we see her in the States at Alpha Male as well. So how does that work with uh, with Uriah and yourself? Like what's the, the sort of, how does that work when, when she fights? Yeah, so I've got a similar thing with, with Arnold Allen as well, yes. you know, so we, so we same, same with Arnold, coaching him from a really young age and the, the way that things have sort of developed with, with both Corey and Arnold is that, you know, they got to a stage in their career where, you know, maybe the level of coaching is 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 good enough at our place, but the the the, the sparring partners and yeah. and training partners aren't there. You know, you know, we're we're based in based in Essex. It's quite an easy lifestyle in Essex. You know, there's lots of things to do going out. You know, it, it, economically, it's not that bad. You know, bad of a place to live, and. Even if you're, you know, you're poor, you're still not that poor. Consider, um, considering other places in, you know, in the UK and in the world, and it just doesn't breed. You know, these 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 kids don't, you know, live and breathe MMA because they've got so many other outs- outside stuff that they they can they can do, and, and you know, they're not they're not sort of fighting for their livelihood. So it doesn't really breed fighters as much, you know. So when you find those rare those rare talents. Um, th- there isn't the consistent level of training partners and people that really want it and are going to be be there day in day out to enable them to grow as much so they they need to go elsewhere and that's what we we found you know we found a really good fit for Corey at Team Alpha Male she tried a few other places she tried ATT and some other place really had a, had a good fit at Alpha Male Cor- uh, sorry Arnold had a had a really great fit at TriStar and. Um, that's how we we've sort of um, developed them. Um, so I've you know I stayed in contact with Faraz for for Arnold and yeah. and Araya and Danny Castillo um, at Team Alpha Male, and you know we stay in contact with the training schedule, what they're doing, what they're planning, um, and how are things going. And I'm 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 kind of there now when they're when they're out there training with those guys, just as a sounding board for how how things are going. Um, you know, deal, help them deal with any problems that they've got, and just give them some guidance. Really, um, and th- out there, they get the the level of training and and partners that they need to get. Well, speaking about Arnold, obviously his last fight was yeah. Movsar Evloev. We both felt like he won that fight. Yeah. Uh, even regardless of illegal knees, no illegal yeah, yeah, knees. Yeah. I thought it was was it quite close in maybe round two. Or what, no, it was round, round one, one was, one was the, close. Yeah. yeah. And I felt like Arnold edged it. Two was Mobsars and then three was definitely yeah. Arnold's. Um, I felt like the, the judges didn't do any any, any favours no. there. I felt like he should have won that fight. Uh, what do you think is next for, for Arnold? Because there's loads of big fights. He could fight, you know, Brian Ortega. He could, I mean, there's plenty of, of big fights in, uh, in that division. But what do you think could be next for Arnold? Has he so, got any ideas? Because he's technically on a a two fight losing streak even though one of them is Max Holloway yeah. and you're like well you can't yeah, no shame there well. and it was still a great performance yeah. and the other one is a fight that I actually think he won and a lot of people thought he won that's it you know so the, the Max Holloway fight you know Arnold that was Arnold's first five round main event against probably the five round king yeah. right so you know we we knew Arnold was fit enough for this but I don't know if he knew in his own mind whether he was, you know, because he'd never done it until he's proven to himself that he could do it. Mm. I think he, there maybe was some, was some doubts there. So maybe he held back a little bit in the early rounds when he really could, maybe could have pushed the pace a bit more. And um, and that resulted in a, in a decision loss, I think. But that gave him some really good confidence going, going you know, past that fight. You know, he's just been there with one of the goats. Mm. You know, was competitive. Took a couple of rounds off him anyway. Did lose the fight. Um, there's, there's, you know, no question about that. But I think his stock went up after that. Yeah, fight. So do, yeah, so do I. Yeah, and um, and then the, the fight after that. You know, we got given no favors. You know, we, you know, Evloev is the guy that everyone in the division has been avoiding. Like I mean, everyone. Mm. Tapuria was was matched with him twice, pulled out twice. Um, you know, Josh Emmett. You know, all these other people. They did not. I want to fight this guy, right? Um, Arnold took that fight, arguably beat him. I think he, I think he beat him. I think the Canadian judges did did no favor, did him no favors. Um, there was an issue, of, obviously, with the, in the third round where Arnold actually knocked the guy out, finished him, but didn't. You know, they allowed the fight to continue because there was a bit of a mix up with the rules. Um, and 
you know, as you say, I think I think he had a really good performance against one of the toughest guys in the division. And um, yeah, the, the, he's on a two fight skid, but the, the the world is still his oyster, and he can go. He can beat any of the guys in that division. I think you know the Volk loss has opened up that division a lot more. Yeah. Um, I would love to see, you know, I'd love to see him fight Yair Rodriguez next. That's a big, that's a, that's big, a big fight. fight. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Rodriguez is on, on a skid now. Um, I think a two fight skid. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, that, that, ma- that fight really makes sense to me. Yeah. So I'd love to, I'd love to see that. I know Arnold, Arnold wants it as well. So we try yeah. and make it happen. No, you made me feel foolish there. Cause I was thinking oh, I'll take a loss to, uh, to Rodriguez, but it was yeah. the other way around. Yeah. Of course it was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you talk about. The, the Essex scene and 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 you know when you find them them little rough diamonds yeah. that are few and far between. Like I mean, we, we just pulled up a picture here of uh, 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 of you and, and a very young looking yeah. Arnold Allen there. Um, like, at what point did you realise that there was proper potential in Arnold Allen? Um, so I mean, really from day one, you know, he was he was frightening. We had him. I think he had. A, you know, we, you would never do this nowadays because the, the sport's really moved on. But he had a he had his an amateur fight at fourteen years old against a, against a good guy and absolutely demolished him. But by the time he was fifteen, he'd, he'd got so good you couldn't match him with other people his age. So you, we had to match him against adults in in the amateur fight. So one of my um, I used to train with Alexander Gustafsson. And he he came across the UK through some training and. He came to one of Arnold's fights, um, and Arnold was fighting. You know, again, we're never doing this, do this again, right? But he was fight. Arnold was fighting a thirty-year-old man. Okay? Wow! And how at, old was Arnold at this point? Fifteen. <laughs> at, oh at, at the Circus Tavern, right? Oh, so, nice. Yeah. So, um, and Alex was Alex was in the corner, uh, and we had all the team there, and uh, Arnold took. Um, you know. The first few seconds of the fight, the other guy came out really strong and we we're like, oh, I was like, oh no, what have I done here? And then like that, Arnold f- flips it around as blitzing this guy and, you know, took him down, submitting him straight away. And I was like, this guy's special, like yeah. really, really special. And um, then on was just performance after performance after performance. And um, he's, yeah, he really, really is someone special. And when he, when he's, you know, Really angry, and he, you know, he's, he can be really vicious. And um, I just, I'm just gonna, lo- I'm gonna love to see him pull the trigger. I think a little bit more in these next coming fights. He's he really got something to prove now. So I think he's, uh, yeah, I think he's, he's going to be some special performance coming up. Yeah, we've been we've been fans yeah. of Arnold for a, a really really long time. But one of the main reasons that you're yeah. here today is to talk about the uh, Cage Warriors Academy yeah. Southeast. So can you tell us? what that is and how it came about. So this, um, so the, the the show originally was called BCMMA and I, it, w- it was running um, for about three shows before I got involved and there was a guy, Chris, Chris Cook founded it. He's no longer involved, but the, um, where I was, you know, building the team at BKK Fighters, we we were fighting on shows all around sort of Essex and maybe a bit further afield, and the the shows they were just not looking after the fighters, you know, the bad matchups, um, just lot lots of issues with the way things were run, um, just no say, you know, no no safety procedures, you know, no one, no one ever got checked for like there was no pre fight medicals or post fight medicals, nothing like that. Um, issues with gloves, you know. And you know, inconsistent. You know, loads of inconsistencies everywhere. No, no, no safety stuff. And um, I was just, you know, disheartened with the way things were running. So I just thought, you know, if if um, if no one's doing it properly, I'll just do it myself. So that's that's what I did. So I got involved with um, BCMMA. I kind of put all of the the things in place, like good matchups. Uh, great safety procedures, all those types of things, and and all of that stuff costs. You know, it costs money, right? So, the one of the issues with doing it is is that the margins in these shows are you know minuscule, and it's very very difficult to break even. But I just felt like it was 
it was the right thing to do. You know, I wanted a, I wanted a show to be proud of. I wanted my guys to be fighting on shows where they're matched properly, looked after properly. You know, because you you are you're going out there and you're having these fights in. Even in the amateur fights, it's, it's kind of like a life or death fight. You know, yeah. you really got you really got to look after these guys, especially if they're they're younger um, and they're just you know just starting out. You don't want these guys to get hurt, so um, that's why I did it. You know, and we've just gone from strength to strength. So we we ended up with BCMMA. We we started using all the 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 officials and the the medical teams that are used in the UFC. So all the guys in the amateurs, they'll. You know, they'll go to the UFC and they'll be speaking to the same medical staff, same referees, same judges. Um, so we've got the, that that good standard there already. And they, they're never going to, it's not going to feel like a big jump when they go to the big shows because they've got all the same people around them. So, you know, they do the same thing. They have the pre-fight medicals. They have all their hands wrapped, um, pro you know, properly by, by professional. And, um, and yeah, it's just the same thing. They just progress through their career, maybe fighting tougher and tougher opponents. And um, yeah, it should should feel really, really, really similar. So, Well, it sounds like a yeah. great thing for the fighters, isn't it? As you say, having the same people around. Yeah. Is, it, does it, is it that you've got amateurs and pros on the same? Yeah, so, that, so that's it. So the way we've we've sort of positioned ourselves now is we are, we are grassroots MMA. So we will develop you through your amateur career to the point in which you go pro, then you'll have one to three, maybe one to five fights as a pro on our event, and then you move on to, to Cage Warriors. That's the Brilliant. that's the path. And then from there you move to the UFC. So we've seen that. We I've, I've got many examples, right? But you know, people that fought on that fought on that show, Ian Gary. Yeah. Who are there's there's so there's so many We're uh, gonna forgive yeah, you yeah, you, yeah. you literally yeah. got back from Vegas <laughs> yeah, 14 yeah, yeah. hours ago. You're Ian, fine. <laughs> Ian Gary, Corey McKenna, many, many, many. Um yeah. Uh, many guys have gone from our show to the UFC via via this this sort of progression, progression path. Tell us a little bit about the importance yeah. of, of Cage Warriors for UK MMA because yeah. there was a fantastic card at the weekend. Yeah, um, and it does feel that you know from the uh, the shows that you're doing through to Cage Warriors, that's the trajectory to find yourself in the UFC. Yeah. There's multiple organisations, but it does feel that if you saw in in cage warriors you're going to find yourself in the ufc that's it, it the, th the thing is so the the way that we run and match our show as well is, is that and and this is maybe because of you know my progression in in my career like 50 fights or whatever and the the way i've sort of seen it work is that you you need to test yourself, you know, right at the right time through your career. You don't want to be over tested early, early on, but you you want to progress. You want to have, you know, fit even matchups, maybe slightly, you know, maybe slightly in your favour, but you want to you want to test yourself every, every single fight, and slowly progress to so that you you get tested and so that you so that when you move up to the next level, you you know in yourself that you can perform at that level and you can yeah. beat these guys. A lot. A lot of you know, a lot of shows, you know, not not cage warriors will, you know, allow these guys to just because they sell tickets or they, you know, they have a big following to fight, have just have easy fights and progress, 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 and when they get to the level, you know, they might get to the UFC, they might get on Daniel White contender series, and then they fall flat on their ass, and and that's because they haven't been tested throughout the career, so. Rightly or you know, rightly or wrongly, with with the the shows that we that we run, we um we we make sure these guys are tested at the right times throughout yeah. the career. So we we manage that on the on the academy show through their amateur career, and then when they go pro as well, um, Cage Warriors do the same. So you're never going to get an easy matchup on on Cage Warriors, yeah. but what that does is it it it, it sort of cuts the chaff and and you. The, the guys that are able to win these fights in, and progress through through the ranks, are they going to be ready when they get to the UFC level? And, you know, that, I think that's... I, I personally believe that's the right way to do it because you don't want to get to that lev level and just get found out. Yeah. And then it's, a, you know, a very short-lived career. It's Ian Dean, isn't it, the matches? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think yeah. he's fantastic. Yeah. He's been... Like, Ian's been... I started, I started fighting in 2005 and Ian Dean was involved in the sport well before that you know so he is like a 
he knows things inside out and he yeah. he's also so knowledgeable about the you know the scenes of all around Europe in in Russia he he knows the talent coming through he can spot the talent as well you know um and he's you know his matchmaking is, is second to none yeah. he's always always put some good fights absolutely and um, what Fa- fans, if yeah. they want to get tickets, stuff like that, there's an event coming up. We got it yeah. right here, uh, April 6th in Grey's at Civic Hall. Uh, my hometown, you come yeah. in my hometown. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, can, what can fans expect? If they go go to one of these Cage Warriors Academy uh, events. What can they expect? So you can ex- like honestly, this is there's no hyperbole here. You know, we we are the best. Uh, honest, uh, I would probably I put my hand on my heart. I think we're the best amateur and grassroots show in the world. Um, you will you will see the the cream of amateur talent from all around Europe. We've got we've got guys flying in from Italy, from Finland, from from Czech, from um, uh, from Norway. You know, we've got so, so many fighters that you know from France that that want to fight on the show that that. My inbox is full every single day. These guys from all around Europe, they know this is the place to place to be. And what we do is we match them up against the, the best guys um, on the UK scene, against the best guys in Europe, and you're going to see some phenomenal fights. And is, is it a kind of UK versus Europe feel to it? Or is it yeah. kind of... Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, that yeah. feel. So we actually have... Um, there's actually a portion of the card where we we have a like a, a relationship with a, a TV channel right in Norway where we have... Norwegians versus the world, basically. So Norwegians oh, versus nice. um, top some of the top UK, UK guys, people from France, Italy. So, so that that's really you know we're really big out there. MMA is is banned in Norway, so that's kind of why we wow. we, we do it for them. Uh, but we get a really big, really big support from the Norwegian fans and um, and and obviously all the fighters and everyone that, that, that fly over. Um, but the the rest of the card is you know the top UK talent versus the, the the top European talent. So it's re- it's really really good fights coming up. Um, I can't you know I can't wait. It's um, it's the first time we've actually been to Grays. So we all of our previous fights, uh, previous events have been in Colchester. Um, great venue there, but this is the the first time we're um, venturing out, and um, it's going to be you know I think the audience is going to be great. It's going to be attracting people from you know close you know. From around this area, yeah, uh, you know, from Kent, from just over the bridge, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really, really, really good night. So it's and a great venue. It's yeah. a great venue. And do you, do you have to coach any of your own fighters in there, or do you get to be the Dana White? Do you get to come out and just like wear a suit and be quite chilled? And no, like, I've, I've never done that. So I, I think that's why, um, I think that's why we get such so much support from all of the, you know, the, the gyms that are involved in it because, because I've, you know, I've had fifty professional fights. People know that I've been there, done that, and um, you know, we we treat you know as I've explained to, to uh, a bit earlier. You know, we, they get the full UFC treatment. So the, the guys turn up, they get um, obviously the rules talk and stuff from the the the, the guys that referee in the UFC. Um, they then get their hands wrapped by the same guys who are going to wrap their, their hands in the UFC, um, and you know, backstage we have all the the screens so they can watch the action of the fights. Um, and you know, the, our, our, our staff, our runners, they treat these guys like, you know, like the professionals they are and they then go and do their fight. They, they have the, the post-fight medicals itch over, checked by the doctors and then get their interviews with, with some of the, the, the great people that we've, we've got doing, um, helping support the media and stuff. And, um, yeah. And then they, they get to watch some some of the great action after after their fights as well. So they, it's a it's a really good experience for the the fighters involved, um, and that, I think that's why they love it and show so much support. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's so great that these fighters, as you say, from grassroots yeah. level, get that experience. It seems like it's only going to do wonders Absolutely. for yeah. British and European yeah. MMA. Like the next few years, you see the crop of guys that you, we could see on that Saturday on April sixth. Yeah come through in a few years' time and they could be in the UFC doing really, really that's well it. because of the experience they've had because of you. Yeah, that's that's it. And and all of the team that are involved in the show, they it's 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 really their passion, you know, they they love to work on the show. They love to give these these guys that experience and um yeah, we're, we're, we're really proud to be able to, to do that. So That's fantastic. I can see that a few people have got belts as well. Yeah. How does that work? So 
have you got your own Cage Warriors Academy Southeast champions in different yeah, weight classes? So yeah. explain to me how that works. So the guy up on the uh, on the right there, so Cameron Stewart. So some of these guys actually guy on now I'm fighting on the show, but so Cameron Stewart, yeah. So he's from he's from South End. He's one of that one of our local guys, and he has been he's the, now the defending lightweight champ. Wow. Um, and he is defending against uh, a guy called a guy from Belgium. Cadre Dean, who is he's actually extremely tall for lightweight, and uh, he's about six foot four, wow. and it's going to be uh, yeah, it's going to be an incredible fight, I think. So Cameron's, I think it's probably it's probably going to be his his last defense, and then he's going to go pro. Um, but he's he's been looking, you know, he's developed so much over the over the the last sort of five years. He's been fighting on the the academy show. And uh, he's really, really improving. So I think um, I think he's going to put in a great performance. And I, th I expect this to be his last defence and then he's going to go pro. So these are amateur titles. And then once you've yeah. maybe defended that once or twice, you go, I'm going to go pro now. And then a few fights into your pro career, if you're doing well. You get picked up by cage wise. Yeah, so there's, there's been you know, there's loads of examples. Uh, we've got a guy called Tommy Brunin. He, he was our um, uh, bantamweight champ. So he defended a number of times, fought some of the best guys in Europe. He's now been picked up by Cage Warriors, and he's going. Um, he's making his pro debut on the 30th of March on Cage Warriors at the O2. Yes. So that's uh, so he. You know, we've got so many examples of this, but um, Tom Brown is definitely one to look out for. Yeah. Um, what one guy that's uh, he's not on the the, the, the screen here, but. Um, he he trains with me as well, but um, a guy called Oli Sawa. So he is uh, he's he's a pro. He's defending his bantamweight professional title on our show, and he is four four fights into his pro career, four knockouts. This wow. guy's got he's a bantamweight, but he's got the touch of death. If he honestly he touches you, good night. And uh, he's we we he's. He's fought a couple of times on, on our show. He's also fought a couple of times in Italy, and uh, every fight has ended up in a in a his opponent going to sleep, and it could be the same this time. So we're gonna we're gonna see if he can make it to five five fights, five Science knockouts. Stuff. Yeah. Well, we'll put the uh, the ticket link in the show yeah, notes. Uh, so anybody who wants to come along with the show, um, just click the link, get a yeah. ticket. We'll be there. With we'll on. be there. And uh, a few fun questions yeah. uh, before you leave. Yeah. Um, talking Cage Warriors, I want to um, ask you to give me uh, a little. Your thoughts in, in a sentence when I rattle off a couple of fighters. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with Harry Hardwick. He's, I mean, he's crazy, but he's, <laughs> he's rel relentless, absolutely relentless. I expect him to, to be the champ, you yeah. know, after his next fight. Yeah. He's relentless. He's very exciting to watch. Great personality. Yeah, yeah. I love him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's another person that could be in the way of that title who's equally exciting. Luke Riley. Yeah, he's a, uh, He's a he's a heavy hitter. He's uh, obviously from a great gym as well, and um, yeah, I expect him to do. What, what way is he bent? Is he bantam or feather? No, he's, he's he's feather, feather running. Feather. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he's so he could fight Harry. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's he's uh yeah he's a, he's a banger. Yeah. He's very exciting to watch. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Lon Kavanagh. Very exciting as well. Foot on our academy show quite quite a number of times as well. Yeah. He's uh yeah very exciting. Great prospect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see yeah. what, what happens there. Uh, and lastly, George Hardwick. He's the champ. He's uh, he's very well-rounded. Um, and yeah, I expect him to see him in the UFC within the next couple yeah. of years. Yeah. yeah. Got, to, got to get them wires off his jaw first. He said his jaw yeah, wired. Jesus, he? yeah, he really? broke his jaw, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it was sparring. Because he was meant to have been on the London show, right? Maybe, maybe yeah. Harry did it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, uh, also, who do you think is going to be the next UK fighter to win a UFC title? Arnold Allen. Yeah. Yes. Good oh, answer. answer. Somebody that um, a lot of people do uh, mention when they're talking about the next UK champion yeah. is Mohamed Mikhaev. Um, uh, yeah. He was arguing a lot, uh, seemed very pissed off at the weekend at the announcement that Pantoja is going to be fighting Steve Herzog. Yeah. Uh, Erseg. Erseg. Yeah. Erseg, sorry. Um, what do you referee. make of that announcement? Um yeah, there's a reason why they've done it. I'm not sure. Maybe they're saving Makaya for a UK show because uh, I think I think UFC can come back to the UK in July. I think that's, I that's think the, the Manchester card is yeah. what they're saying. Yeah. yeah, and you know Makaya's from from yeah. up that way as well. Yeah, um, or something in the Middle East. But yeah. he's got to be next. 
He's, yeah, he's on a really good run. Yeah, he's he's incredible. Um, and he, he definitely um, one of the guys that could win the title next. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think part of it potentially goes back to, like you talking about... Um, Sorry, what was the name of that fighter you mentioned who had four knockouts? And, um, Oli Sawa. Sawa. Yeah, yeah. Um, you talk about that and you go, everyone goes, four knockouts in a row, yeah. that's really good, really yeah, good. Yeah. Mohamed Mikhaev hasn't been like knocking, he's got some some really good yeah. finishes, some great groundwork, some really fantastic performances. But then Steve Erta said that recently, gets Matt Schnell, yeah, just yeah, knocked yeah. him out with that yeah. left hook. That is one of those moments where Dana and the UFC, they go, marketable so bink that looks good on the highlight yeah. reel Pantoja's got to be wary of the knockout power even though Ursig's not actually knocked anyone out in the UFC prior mm. to that but they just go there we yeah. go and I think that is that's just the way it works yeah. isn't it it's, 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 it's a harder road I think for the grapplers than yeah. it is the strikers if you're a successful striker you've got that thing that everyone can see it and go oh he's just kicked or punched someone they're out whereas with the grapplers a lot of people unless you're very much knowledgeable about jiu-jitsu wrestling stuff like that you're watching it sometimes going I don't really know what's yeah. going on that's what um, I think uh, Evloev the guy in the, in the featherweight division yes. that just fought Arnold he, um, he's on a well he's unbeaten right he's 18-0 18, 18 and 0 yeah. on a six fight win streak just you know just come off an arg arguable win over Arnold um, and he, he should be in you know the top five now Yeah, but He's not getting a title shot. It's all decisions as well. He, all of his fights have been decisions. He's not finished anyone, yeah. and and he's going to really struggle to to argue his yeah. case to, to fight for the title. Mm. And um, yeah, that's the, it, it's a reality. You know, if, yeah. if you're um, if you're not you know finishing guys, whether it's knockout, it's, you know, impressive submissions, you're um, you, it's going to be much harder for you to get that title mm -hmm. fight. Yeah, so I, I think Mokayev is definitely. Um, He's definitely going to be fighting for the title very soon. He's very young still. He's got he's got the, mm. the world at his feet. Yeah. Um, I understand why he's annoyed, but yeah. as you say, if you're finishing these guys, you've got much you've got a much better case of of arguing your way to mm. to that title shot. Yeah. I you know Arnold was in a similar, similar position. You know he was was he 11, 11 and zero in the UFC, mm -hmm. and um, you know we got given uh, you know it was a great fight. Obviously Max Holloway. But it would have, you know, if it, I think he won that, he would have got the title, title fight. But you know, 11, 11 and zero in the UFC, you could argue why didn't he have a title shot in the first mm -hmm. place? Yeah. Same with Leon prior yeah. to him as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. These guys putting up yeah. big win streaks. But as you say, he had that Dan Hooker moment, yeah, 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 which was yeah. just we were there. Yeah. We were like, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's let the power go yeah. for once because you can tell he's got it. He moves so well on his oh, feet, Arnold. But he's got that power yeah. as well. Um, Any, anyone that anyone that ever spars with him, he fight, spars with a lot of professional boxers like he's you know uh tobira has got got um you know inc incredible knockout power but, but so's arnold you know that that would be a really really good fight to yeah. see see their level of boxing between the two that would be that would be a really good fight so eventually when that happens it's gonna be gonna be a good night yeah fantastic yeah. fantastic Jack. You got anything else? No, no, just other than thanks, Jack. Thank and, you so uh, much for coming. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks for having uh, us on. We'll see you at the Civic Hall. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to be, honestly, it's going to be three weeks now. It's going to be a brilliant night. Yes, yeah. Saturday, April 6th, Civic Hall in Grey's, Cage Warriors Academy, South East 34. It's going to be a good night. Absolutely. We're going to be there. Absolutely. If you're in London, literally jump on the train, it drops you off right in the middle of Grey's. That's what you need. <laughs> Lovely. Thanks, mate. Thank, Thank you. you mate. Appreciate it.